class is about uh, you being able to be the creative force behind something that's basically like a company. You're computer scientists, you're problem solvers. Ever since I was a kid, I, I always knew I liked solving puzzles, but I always also knew I was really bad at them. Uh, and then finally, when I was you know, five or six, we got a computer. I finally felt like I was getting a tool set that I was good at that I could use to solve puzzles. And to me, CS just represented that. Your biggest challenge is those that are sort of unsuspecting and just started doing it, yeah. how do they get uh, sucked in? Right now, there's just a couple more things that we want to polish, and I think we'd be ready for some distribution. Right now, the newest version has been played by three people. One. <laughs> <laughs> Your sole purpose now is to collect data so that you, you can figure out how to make it better. All right, guys, you're at the last mile here. Hey, man. Um, we're, we're in a uh, capstone class, and we're testing a, a game. The name of our project is Grid World, and the goal of the game is to have these vehicles. So it's sort of like a programming game. The user would input sequences into the track to guide these vehicles. I think the biggest problem that we faced when we were making this game was trying to find balance between making it hard or easy depending on the player. Because our game is very like logic-based and people that are in computer science tend to do pretty well at the game. But then people that don't, don't really do that well. So we're trying to find a different way of progressing the game and teaching them how to play as they progress through. So our game's called Apaka Shop. We wanted to combine text-based, faster-paced gameplay along with poking fun at those old games that we really like. When our class went to the hub, we learned a lot. Some people don't like to read everything. We have a button that you should press to kind of get the clues for the day. After we met with her, we knew that we should uh, make it more obvious. If you pick this up, you can now fall here, and he'll be hovering over the spikes. Oh, I see. Our project is called uh, Shadow Sync. It's a puzzle platformer game, meaning you're jumping around and um, trying to get to the end of the level, but you're also manipulating both your character and the world around you to do it. You keep advancing through the game. You keep on progressing to higher and higher levels. It's kind of like Candy Crush in that sense. A lot of the levels that we thought were very simple, very easy to understand, like five seconds and it's done, took people like a good five minutes, five, ten minutes. People died like ten times on those levels. So just the simple levels, how hard they were, was something we didn't expect. The thing I liked best about going to the hub was getting feedback from strangers that was more genuine. Watching them play, we see a lot of things that they probably didn't think were problems, but they were definitely not doing it the way we designed it for them yeah. to understand. We had one player literally tell us that she used a different part of the brain to play games and a different part of the brain to read. So like, she just straight up told us that she would not read. And we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's why casual, that's why Bejewel is making billions of dollars, right? I mean, the, the idea is that a lot of people have expectations of just being casually entertained. I played a lot of games growing up. Doing things on the computer was what I enjoyed the most. Once you like figure something out, it's like the eureka moment. That's pretty rewarding. There's just like so many different problems that you can apply CSE to, so um, that's why it's fun.